Okay. Welcome friends. Welcome team. We're so glad you're here. This is such a huge deal to show up on these calls midweek, middle of the night. Maybe someone else in your family is taking care of your kid's bedtime or something else. You've said no to something else in, in order to say yes to this. And so we just applaud you for that and celebrate you for that. I want you to use it as evidence that you are good enough, that you are willing to put in the work and do hard things to, um, work toward your dream and to create something amazing with your life. So um, let's say a prayer as we open and as more people are hopping on. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this group of like-minded people. We thank you so much for inviting us into this place onto this team, into this company and into this precious space tonight, inviting us to grow, inviting us not to avoid the negative emotions that this business brings up, not to avoid the, um, the possibility of failure, not to avoid the risks, but to dig deep into those things and to use them as, um, use them as opportunities to overcome. So I'm very thankful tonight for a fellow amazing leader in Cassie, thankful for who she's been in my life and for how she's going to bless the group tonight. And I just pray that you would bring vulnerability and that you would bring, um, honesty and authenticity and simple breakthrough. God, it doesn't always have to be earth shattering um, to be profound. So I pray that you just bring clarity and wisdom and opportunities to overcome and that you bless the time that we are together tonight and bless it as we take it forward this month in your, in your son's name. Amen. Okay. So kicking us off before we dive into coach with Chelsea and Shara, I was looking back for the order. Um, I wanted to share something with you that came to my mind this week. It actually came to my mind as I was texting you, Shara, yesterday, because she has had a struggle come up in her life, recovering from a surgery. And um, one thing is true about life. We absolutely cannot control what hits us. We absolutely just cannot control our circumstances. I would say 99% of life we cannot control. And, but here's the thing. We are 100% accountable for our role in our life. And we're 100% accountable for what we do and how we show up no matter what comes, no matter what happens. And so as I was texting her and just feel, you know, just having a moment feeling with her because it's been frustrating her recovery. It brought back to my mind, this little series of questions that I wanted to just use to kick off our call. As we, as we seek to become 100% accountable people, that means people who realize we create our reality. We create our quality of life. We do nobody else. You've probably heard it said on a couple of calls this week that the good news is we are the problem, but we are also the solution. And that is very, very good news. Did everyone hear that on a couple of calls this week? Um, so as people who want to understand that we're 100% accountable for creating our own quality of life every single day, here are some questions I want you to just run through your mind on the reg. The one I sent to you, Shara, was, what is this here to teach me? What is God trying to teach me through this circumstance? Because it's very easy to experience a circumstance and feel like, why me? Why is this happening to me? This sucks. This is so hard. Why is it so hard for me? Why is this happening? So I, I want us to get good at asking yourself, what is this here to teach me? <laughs> it's amazing what answers pop into your brain when you start asking that question. So that's one of them. Another one is um, simply asking yourself, how did I contribute to where I am right now? It's not a blame game, but we do have to be aware of how we contributed to where we are right now. Um, what energy am I bringing to this situation? Energy bleeds onto others. It is as contagious as COVID. <laughs> so what energy am I bringing to the situation? Because do I, what, do I want my anxiety and my negativity to bleed onto everyone around me? Or do I want overcomer energy? Fig this is figure outable energy bleeding onto everybody around me. Okay, how am I reacting? No, I can't control this circumstance. I can't control how my body is responding to this recovery process or whatever you're going through in your life. But how am I reacting? 
And what meaning am I attaching to what has happened? Um, if you are fangirling over Emily Gibson, like I am, like Cassie is, like so many of our leaders right now, she talks about how um, the thoughts we have are not facts, they are thoughts. And so being willing to consider that those thoughts may be wrong, just being willing to consider that those thoughts may not be facts can change your whole life. So um, if you didn't quite get all of those down, if somebody did, could you just throw them in the chat? And of course, those who watch the replay can copy them then. Um, but let's kick it over to Cassie and Chelsea. Cassie, if you could um, kick the floor back over to me as close to 8.15 or 8.20 as possible, that will allow us to end right at an hour, just for okay. respect everyone's time. Yeah, okay. definitely. Well, I'm so excited for you, Chelsea. It's going to be an awesome night. I know how nerve wracking it can be, it can be like, I'm called out. I've got to get out. But I'm telling you, the more raw and the more real you are, the more actions and steps that you're going to have to be able to move forward. And so tell me a little bit about your journey. Tell me about kind of what's going on right now with you. Uh, so February and March were really great. You know, I got started and I made it to gold and everything was super exciting and I was pumped. Um, and then my, I had a couple of my best friends who just broke my heart. Um, and I think that has some what to do with like me just like not feeling the motivation or not giving it my all. Um, they were just honest with me and their honesty really hurt and it was not positive in any way. Um, so kind of since then I've been kind of finding, I don't know. I don't know. I've been sad that in myself that I had all this going and I was so excited. And then I just kind of like let it slip. I don't know if too, I like overdid it and I burnt myself out really quickly, which to me is really embarrassing to say, because I feel like two months of trying to do something really exciting. And then I burn myself out. Like that's very short lived and that's not normal for me either. I try to go, you know, further than that. So I don't know. And then just everything with life is like overwhelming right now. So I don't know. <laughs> so hard news, especially from best friends are always something that's going to and can break you, but it doesn't have to. And I think that a, a reminder that you can set yet, yeah, yes, these expectations and, and what they ex, like, you had these expectations out of them of maybe they're going to be runners and they're going to be doing this with you. Right. They're going to like take off with you. just being supportive is really all that I wanted just them to say like I'm happy you're happy but that's not what they said and I was like you know me you know my heart and for you to like twist this whole all the way to be like something else I'm like whoa I gotta take a step back because like you know me so how how do you twist this to be like completely different than what I'm talking about. Do you think um, whatever is going on in their mind is probably a negative effect of that that happened to them with network marketing or something else that they're taking it out on you? One of them, she's like, yeah, I have a girl from back home that sells this, you know. So all, I already knew, like I wasn't trying to push her and I rarely mentioned anything to either of them because I knew I didn't want to affect our relationship even though from my point of view I'm like I have something exciting I am growing personally and that's what I want you to see out of me is that I want to grow into a leader and that's all that I want support from basically and that's not what they um, read or heard from me and it was just really unfortunate and it broke my heart so yeah <laughs> but I I feel like sometimes 
those hurt the most when you have it very close friends tell you those things and even yeah. family members. I mean, to this day, I have family members that do not support me. Um, but I've had to come to realize that my true best friends, if I stay consistent and if I stay committed and if I keep going, they will prayerfully see the end result that I saw that they might not have. Yeah. Um, whatever negative connotation they have in their mind is not what you have in your present mind, right? Right. And I think that um, that's another thing to kind of keep in the forefront is you have to have blinders on because right now they're trying to distract you. And I, I, you know, I tell this to my team all the time, Satan, really your brain, you know, especially with Emily's cause, they've been phenomenal. Your brain is going to keep you safe. And so right now your best friend's telling you that your brain's like, whoa, girl, I see, I told you, I told you, you shouldn't be doing any of this. It's going to keep you safe. And it's going to give you those safe words because your best friends always did that. They gave you the safe stuff now that they're not it's taken you in a, a different direction. Mm -hmm. So switch it around. If you're, if you, if you were in their shoes and you, they were in, they were doing what you're doing right now, would you say those same words to them? And would you want to stop them from going and moving forward? I, I don't think I would have responded the way they responded to me. I was utterly shocked. Yeah. But does that have to stop you from your end vision goal yeah. of what you see? So I kind of got to this point where I thought about it for a few days and I'm like, do I literally, do I just block them from seeing everything that I post? And then after some time thinking about it, I'm like, no, because if this is God's purpose for me, then God will eventually, you know, that's Satan telling me you need to block them. They don't deserve this. No, God knows that if this is my path, he wants me to do, and I'm helping people, then I need to continue posting and showing and whether, you know, they're included or not, right. there's no reason for me to block them. If right. I'm doing what God wants me to do right now. Right. Could you imagine how they would feel if they weren't seeing any of your posts anymore? What more negative could go into their mind because of that? Yeah, that's true. Um, I feel that if they're your true friends, they're going to be there, even if they don't like it. I mean, I, with homeschooling, my mother-in-law was like, you're not, you're not trained enough to do what you're doing. Did that stop me? No. Is she still my mother-in-law? Yes. <laughs> do I still have to put up with her? Yes. Your best, <laughs> your best friends are still going to be there and they should hopefully still be there, but you keep those blinders on. And like, I, I see it like, riding a bicycle because you have kids, right? Yeah. Okay. Training wheels, training wheels aren't fun, but you're teaching, you're having teaching moments and you're teaching your kid, kids on those training, on the training wheels. But in, in a moment, you're going to have to take those off, right. And do the scary things and the things that you don't want to do. Yeah. Do you keep those training wheels on because it's safe? No, you need to move past it. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell your daughter if all of her friends were telling her, no, 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 keep your training wheels on. Mm -mm. Don't, don't take them off. Yeah. You need to be brave and do it. So what does it feel when I tell you that to take the training wheels off? Like, does that, what kind of, what's going on when I say all that? Um, stop thinking about what their thoughts are how they responded, just throw that away because it doesn't matter at this point. It's insignificant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I feel like when we're teaching our kids, we want them to learn in teachable moments. Mm -hmm. We want them to keep growing. We want them to keep learning because if we keep the training wheels still on, they're never going to grow up. Could you imagine an 18 year old with training wheels still on their bike? I feel like... <laughs> Everybody wants to keep everybody safe and in a bubble because that's what's safe. And mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't successful in this because they want to stay safe. And mm -hmm. God put you here in this journey for a reason, because he knew that you would not keep it safe all the time. You would be doing his greater purpose and what he's calling you to do, even though your best friends might not see that right now. Mm -hmm. um, so your, your brain is just keeping you safe. and what, what does it look like 
um, trying to move forward without the feelings of your best friends and trying to stop you? Um, like, do you see yourself doing that? Like moving forward and really? Yeah, I, I, and I have moved forward. Um, I don't, I really had to take time and tell myself we have a friendship. We have a relationship with boundaries and I'm okay with that because I love that. Like I'm going to accept this. But I don't want it to stop me from doing the things I want to do and having this opportunity that's incredible and to be able to help people in this way, there's no reason for me to stop doing that for their thoughts. Um, I think I was just all like on a roll and then I let go of it and now like trying to get back on that roll. Um, when one of Emily Gibson's videos, she talked about how like she didn't have motivation every day, but she knew with consistency, that's what she needed to do. And I was like, oh, that clicked. Like, mm -hmm. that, I'm glad <laughs> not everyone's motivated every day because I, you know, I was for like February, March, like, I was on a high. I was so excited. I just felt the Lord's presence in me. I just like, I was so joyful and throughout the whole process, I would tell you, I'm like, I don't want this joy to go away. Like I like to have joy in your life that we don't really experience all that often um, was really incredible. And that's what I was like, why don't you guys see that? That's the part that I'm like, man, this is so incredible. So I think letting that go. And then I'm like, okay, I want to feel that again, but really I just want to get to working again, you know, and hopefully I can have the joy along the process. So this month I feel like, okay, it's a new month. Let me, um, you know, try to challenge myself, be brave, be uncomfortable and try to grow again. So I'm and now I'm like, I was talking to somebody um, through my mother-in-law's post and I'm like, I just want to have a conversation and I'm trying to figure out like, how do I say the next thing? I think that's kind of what tripping me up right now is like, okay, how do I go from to the stranger and then lead into, okay, yeah. <laughs> more not, and without being like salesy and stuff like that. So mm. that's partly where I'm like stuck. Oh, well, I can help with that. And we'll get to that in a second. Cause that, <laughs> I feel like that is something that I've grown in because again, you keep the training wheels on, you get scared and you keep them on and you're like, wait, but if I'm salesy, let me just keep them on for a little bit longer. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to fall. I'm not ready to have failure. I'm not ready to scrape my knees and hit my head, all of that. And that all comes with, it just comes with our journey. Right. But I wrote down a couple of things and you said that, um, but your friends aren't seeing it. And I want to ask, are they in your bubble all the time? Are they going to see all the amazing things that Plexus has? No, they've moved away. It's been a, a long distance relationship that's turned into. And so what they saw, I don't, I guess it, to them, it just didn't come through sincerely. So that's when everything kind of changed. Gotcha. And I think that, I think that's the hard part is when people aren't in here and they're not seeing this amazing community, they don't understand it, um, yeah. until they actually see it. So it's just a complete difference. So know that because they're not in your bubble, they're not, they're not here either. They're not going yeah. to see those big things. Now you did say that, um, you want to do the things and you want to keep growing it. What, what, what does Plexus offer you? Like what big dreams and goals does it look like for you? I think the biggest thing for me is I want to become like one of you, like leading other women. Like that is something that um, my job isn't going to give me right now. I'm not in any other space that grows me personally. And that is what I really fell for um, getting started was not only are these amazing products that transform people's lives, but for me personally, I want to transform myself into a leader. Yeah. What does that leadership look like? Like what, what gives you life in that? Like what should get you excited about doing that? Um, the thought of helping other women do the same thing 
And um, I think that in turn would allow me to be a better role model for my kids and then teach like, because I have a daughter and I, I, I don't want her to be restricted by anything. I don't know. I, I, I want her to still move further than I have ever moved further. So me becoming a leader can also help teach her like how incredible she could be in life and stuff like that. I think daughters can do that. We want more for them and we want them to follow our lead just like anything that we do. You know, anything that we do, they see and they model. And so that's huge that you want that for, for her and that growth um, because you're willing and able to move. Now you did say you, um, you wanted to be brave. So what does being brave look like to you? Um, I think just being uncomfortable, talking to strangers, um, talking in front of people. I'm don't love and doing, <laughs> I, I don't enjoy it, <laughs> but I know when I do it, that it's going to make me better at it. So I do force myself to do the things that feel uncomfortable because I know I'm going to be better, but I need more opportunities to do that. And the uncomfortable things are what other people think of you, right? Yes. Yeah. Because you constantly want to think the bad things that they're thinking of you, not the good things. Your brain is like, okay, they're thinking, I don't know what I'm talking about, that I'm just selling them something. Mm -hmm. Our brains, I think there's this statistic, oh my God, I can't say it right now, see? But um, there was something out recently where it says our brain, I was a podcast or something, our brain focuses on the 1% of the negative that we hear in life versus the 99 positive that we hear. And that's, I don't know why, but we just do. So would you, would you rather have your daughter stop her leadership and her growth because of what her best friends think of her? Mm -mm. Oh, that would upset me. <laughs> just thinking about it now. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. I want you to, I want you to really focus on that because I know for me with two daughters, if I can really take a step back and visualize and see like, what would I tell them if they were in my situation and they were terrified to be on a coaching call, lead other people, or, you know, reach out and phone call somebody and say, oh my gosh, I really would love for you to do this with me. Anything. Right. I put myself back and, and realize like, what would I tell my daughters? What would I motivate them and, and move into them? So you have to be your best coach when somebody else isn't there. And same with them. You want them to have that internal motivation that they still do it, even when they don't want to. Um, man, th these comments, these, the, when you can, when we're done, I want you to really look at this chat because this chat is blowing up on wonderful things that I think are really going to be impactful for you moving forward. Because if you keep focusing on the, on the distractions, just like I, again, I'm going to back to the bike. If your daughter was focusing on the distractions when those training wheels were off, she's always going to fall. Mm -hmm. So you really have to stay focused and keep moving forward when there are distractions because they're going to keep coming, but you have to see like your, what you want in Plexus is more for your daughter, more for you, more for mm -hmm. life. So focus on that road, not the other, you know, hanging roads and other things on, along the side that are going to keep coming. You stay focused on that and it will really give you exactly what you want. No, you're not, you're, you're, yes, this business is always going to be a roller coaster. And you saw that you got huge. You had that umph of that roller coaster where it was taken off. Right. Yeah. But there's always a dip. There always is. And so you, I want you to recognize that in anything that we do that dip always comes back up and it's because of a growth and a leadership or something that we needed to hear and grow into is why we're at the dip or why we're even not at the dip, but we're like here and we're waiting for it to come back up. We're like, Hey, what else do I need to learn? God? Okay. What else can I learn that I need to keep being fearful of? And I really think that, um, you just focus on what would my, what would I tell my daughter if her best friends told her that? What would I tell my daughter 
if she was allowing what they told her to stop her from her dreams and her goals and her leadership. Really? Yeah. Like really soak into that and mm -hmm. journal that tonight. I think that it's so powerful. I'm a pen and paper person, mm -hmm. uh, really powerful to write those things down. So really write that down once we're done and say, what would I tell my daughter if her best friends told her this? And then write those things down because you will, you're going to, I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to have a lot of negative people there. It's going to happen. You're going to have people that are mm -hmm. the closest to you even say those things, but you have to realize your road and your destination and your journey is not theirs. And you would, mm -hmm. you would want to be their best advocate, even though they're not yours right now. Yeah. They're going to see that maybe there's things that you don't support and that, but you're still there and you're still present. And they're going to remember that they're going to be like, you know what, man, we were so rude to Chelsea, you know, two months back, but we're doing this new thing and she's still right there. And she's not saying anything rude about it or X, Y, Z. So you just stay focused on what you, your goals and stuff are and find what motivates you. Um, I know for me or what, what motivates you? I'll tell you mine here in a second, but what, what fills your cup? Um, well, definitely only cause in like February and March, I just constantly just wanted all the information. I just wanted to learn here. Um, I mean, all the, like the leadership, like that's what I was trying to consume like 24 seven. That's what I wanted constantly because I was like, this is what I need. This is what I'm lacking. So for right now, I think that's, probably it. So diving back into getting knowledge and everything mm -hmm. plexus wise fills your cup. Yeah. Okay. So are you coming to convention then? I bought my tickets last night, <laughs> my plane tickets. <laughs> so it's official. okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad because I will tell you convention. If, if all of y'all aren't there, we're going to have a conversation, but <laughs> I'm telling you, it is the best thing that will fill so many buckets for different people because it really hits different things. You're going to have your party scene for the partiers. You're going to have your fill my cup up with science. You're going to have, I feel like it really mm -hmm. hits every personality. And so I think once you're there, you're going to have, you're going to be back up on that roller coaster and you're ready no matter what distractions come your way. And you're going to be like, you know what? Shara, you don't have my goals right now. I'm going here and I'm going to be making sure that everybody can fill their gas tank without being worried or fearful or whatever of what is, what is happening in our economy, because what we have to offer is so much bigger than that. And so I want you to stay focused on that and, but find other things like Plexus is great. Don't get me wrong, but you can't always have your bucket filled with just Plexus stuff. So look at other things that fills your bucket for me. I love motivational calls. Like they just fill or motivational podcasts or good sermons. So whatever that looks like for you, start your day with that every single morning, Yeah, five minutes in the shower, whatever, put it on. If it's, if it's worship music for me, it's that too. So just whatever it is, turn that on because then the negatives tend to fly away when it comes throughout the day. So, yeah, I'm excited to see you, Chelsea. And just, just, really write those things down tonight and just see where that leads you. And I really think that it's going to help. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a couple of thoughts too, before we switch over to Shara um, and Chelsea too, like we'll send you our notes. Um, you know, you'll rewatch and you'll kind of listen back to some of the things that probably fly over your head when you're like, in the heat of the, you know, moment on the hot seat. So you'll listen back, but then we can send you our notes too. Um, and Cassie, I don't know how much note-taking you did. I did a bunch. So I'll send Chelsea mine and maybe you can send Sherry yours while, <laughs> while I'm coaching with her. But I need to tell you a fact. Here it is. 99% <clears throat> of people's reaction to you is them coping by projecting. 99% of what people think about you has nothing to do with you. It's their story creating goggles with which they view the world. And so it's not, yes, they told you, yes, they twisted your motives and they think you're just out for a sale and they're assuming the worst. And no matter how you defend yourself, they can come up with a comeback 
Um, but that is all about how what you're doing makes them feel about them. It is zero about actual you, because as you just said, they're not even in your life. Like they don't have a window into Plexus or our team, but they also don't have a window into your life anymore. And so all of the reactions that they're feeling is how, whatever it is that you're doing and however you're doing it is, is, is triggering them to feel about themselves. And it's interesting, isn't it? That in what you said, February, March, Chelsea was so full of joy, so full of confidence, so motivated to learn, lead other women, be a role model, help others lead and be a role model to your daughter. Isn't it interesting that that would bother anyone? So the curiosity that you can begin to have, not necessarily with them because curiosity can really only exist in a safe place. And when somebody is bound and determined to twist your motives and assume the worst of you, that's not a safe place. So we'll talk about that in a second. But you can become curious in your own mind with why anyone would be upset, uncomfortable, or insecure watching a woman who they love um, feel joyful and confident and lead other women and be a role model to her daughter. You have to ask yourself, what is that triggering in them and how is it making them feel about themselves? Because I will tell you, it has nothing to do with you. Nothing. You are just bringing their discomfort to the surface. So really think about that. Um, and I would challenge you to make yourself a little list and at the top of the paper, write whose opinion gets weight. I had to do this early in my plexus journey because when you were talking, I literally felt like you were describing my first year in plexus. Some of the closest friends in my circle relentlessly assumed the worst. And no matter what defense I offered, it got worse and worse. And so I had to make a list of names, Chris, my mother-in-law, my brother and sister, and that may have been it. <laughs> there were, those were the four people who I decided valued their opinion on my business. Um, so I would encourage you to do that. Brene Brown calls it the square squad. It, it's make a, make a square piece of paper one inch by one inch and only the names that fit on that one inch by one inch square get to be on your square squad. That's how, that's how, because are they people in your life? Do they know your heart? Do they assume the best? Do they love you? Do they want to see you win? What stinks is when you realize some of your best friends don't meet, don't, the answer to those questions is it yes. It really stinks, but it also is, telling information. So I wanted to pass that along to you real quick because I, I have learned that it is 100% true that they are reacting to how whatever you're doing is making them feel about themselves. It is not about you. Um, and oh yes. And so I also just quickly plugged everything you were saying into our little thought model. And you talked about the circumstance being that your friends basically broke your heart. And the thoughts that came from that were, okay, so they think I'm just out for a sale. They're twisting my motives. They're assuming the worst. Um, now I feel like when I reach out, it's going to somehow affect the relationship with, you know, if I, or if I were to reach out to other people that I, that I care about a lot, it's going to affect the relationship. The feelings I heard you describe were you were shocked, shocked, sad, also disappointed in yourself, embarrassed don't even see yourself as like an early fizzler or a short-lived person. So there's some shame, like, um, and then what that led to was you stopped taking action. You even considered blocking them from seeing your posts, which is it, what that is. It's a, it's an effort to try and control how your message is received. And like I just said, 99% of how your message is received has everything to do with that person and their story. <laughs> and nothing to do with you. So we can't control how our message is received. If I were to post like, I love oranges, there would be people who are like, oh, what about the people who are allergic to oranges? Um, what about the people, what about pineapples? You didn't even mention pineapples. Like, I know you laugh, but that don't you see that on social media where somebody posts a very neutral opinion and everybody gets offended? Well, that's because we live in a culture where offense is currency. If the more victimized I am, the more social capital I have, so that's just kind of the culture we live in. So we cannot control how our message is received. And so as soon as we stop trying to do that, we're free. 
And so the, the idea of, can I block them from seeing my posts? Well, you could, but you still can't control how your message is received from anybody. So, but yeah, I was anyway, th through the thought model. So as you felt that shock and sadness, disappointed in yourself, embarrassed, a little bit of ashamed that here I am, like, you know, I was so excited and I was moving so quickly and now I've kind of shrunk back. Um, but that, but that brought on those actions of stopping taking action. I also heard you say, um, that your mother-in-law did that great post, right? And so you were contemplating how to start conversations with those people. Well, how would, um, February, March, Chelsea have started conversations with those people. Cause I heard from you was, well, I'm kind of embarrassed to start those conversations with those people. And I don't really know what to say to make sure I come across not salesy. Isn't it interesting? Because in February and March, it would have been confident, joyful, anxious to help, excited to lead, excited to change their life. And now here it's, oh, but I don't want them to think X, Y, Z, or I don't want them to assume the worst, or I, or I feel embarrassed. How am I going to bring it up? So another thing I would offer you is to ask yourself, how would February and March Chelsea reach out to those people? And to continually remind yourself that just because of a certain few people assume the worst and they twist, they twist your motives, um, they don't represent everybody. Mm -hmm. They really don't represent everybody. That doesn't mean that you can predict that everybody you reach out to will be one of the one of the negative Nellies or one of the super supporters. You can't control that. You never know. But they don't represent everybody. So be asking yourself, how would February or March Chelsea reach out to those people? And I already know it's with joy and confidence. It's with an excitement for learning. It's with a desire to lead and be a role model. And I think it would be bold and I think it would be direct. I don't think it would be timid. I don't think it would be embarrassed. I don't think it would be overly careful. Um, Megan always says careful reach outs, careful posting are like lukewarm coffee. So I feel like your friends are kind of wanting you to be lukewarm coffee, Chelsea, because something about joyful, confident leader, Chelsea, is like triggering some insecurity in them. And I don't know what it is. And I don't really need to know because I feel like not only until those people are a safe landing spot, can you really dig in curiosity and maybe find out what it's triggering in them. But I think you know enough to know <laughs> that if they're wanting you to be lukewarm coffee Chelsea instead of strong leader joyful Chelsea there's something going on there so I just wanted to offer you some of that and I'll send it to you in my notes too but I wanted to throw that in and thank you Cassie I loved what you said about tapping into seeing yourself like you see your daughter mm -hmm. Okay, she's muted. But yeah, tapping into that and how that brings what I wrote down is it kind of brings up like a righteous anger, not like an out of control, frustrated anger, but a level of um, like indignance that 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 yeah, mama bear that that's not how yeah. that's not how you would want your daughter treated. And you certainly want, wouldn't want your daughter shrinking back and making herself small to to appease or please other small minded people. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Thank you, Cassie. Okay, um, Shara, can you unmute? Yes. All right. So first of all, congrats on your amazing re-rank bonus. Thank you. Was that last month? Yes. No, okay. no, no. Last month was consistency. Okay, so, oh, yes, yes. And that is a huge deal. So can you just share with everybody, can you just kind of celebrate that win with us and explain what it means? Yes. So I finally hit gold July of last year. I never hit gold again, gold points again until what is this? June, April, right? April of this year, I finally hit gold again. And then I was able to be consistent and I was still gold last month. So, yes. I was so excited for you when I saw that. And what's more is that I also saw you fight for gold throughout the year. It wasn't okay. I, I haven't, I didn't, I didn't re-rank. And so I'm now going to avoid looking at my points and I'm going to avoid doing the work. It was, I saw you fight for it. I saw you leave it on the field multiple times. <laughs> 
And I feel like that makes the victory all the sweeter. Yes. Yes. And I think the consistency was even sweeter uh -huh. because, you know, everybody in this type of business knows it dips. And um, I only fell, I, I didn't gain any more points. I did fall, but I still I only fell by four points, which is huge for me. Totally. So, totally. Yes. Because retention is, is its own thing. Like it is a skill that has to really be honed. I was so excited for you too. When I saw Thank that. You. Yay. Okay. So, um, now at this point, and I also have to say too, that you hit it during a rise up rank up month. Okay. Yes. So double bonus <laughs> and consistency bonus. So that's super exciting. Okay. So where is your brain at for June? I am really, really one to push for senior gold um, plus it's the last month for the rise up rank up and that'd be a sweet bonus <laughs> totally. so why not exactly yeah um i'm really pushing for that but i i definitely um want to hit consistency again i feel like that is really important to me also oh yeah so that's like my that's like my small goal but my big goal is a senior yeah. gold um, and the consistency bonus. Okay. So you will be proud and happy and thankful if you earn the, and how much is the consistency bonus for maintaining gold? $75. 75. Okay. Okay. So that'll be exciting. Um, but as far as creating 150 more points to push to senior gold, how does that hit you? Um, I guess let's just work, let's just work it through the, the thought model here real quick. Um, so what do you think about adding 150 points in June to get to 250? So my feeling, if you want to talk about feelings part of it first, um, to me, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do that because it was so much to just hit a hundred, you know, and even consistency for the consistency bonus part. It's so hard, like to hit a hundred. Um, I'm basically doing it by myself. I have one person working under me. Um, so, and I know to go to senior gold, I really need to try to find me some business builders to help me get that, get there. Um, so I'm working with my one that's, um, that is working me and her are working. Um, she's got, she's really wanting to hit gold. So we're working on, um, her and then I have a plan for me that I at least want to, um, add, I think I wanted to add three people and I want to get them three people, their three people, okay. um, to help. I had sat down, I've wrote it all out, kind of mapped it out for myself um, as a starting to get me there. Because again, in my mind, 150 more points is very scary because it's all I can do to get to get a hundred. Right, right, right. Okay. So actually those are not the feelings. Those are the thoughts. So the thought is, I don't know if I can, it was so much to hit a hundred. I have one worker. I need business builders. Those are thoughts. Correct. Um, so, and, and, and as a reminder, since I've just been watching so much, Emily, the reminder is, are you willing to consider that those thoughts might not be facts? So the, yes. I don't know if I can, um, it was so much to hit hundred. Now, yes, that was true. It was so much. You were doing it almost alone mm -hmm. with Ashley, with your one worker. Um, and then I, and I think you have some really I think you have some really productive thoughts in there too, because you said, I know I need business builders, right? Um, right. That's, that's a very productive thought to remind yourself of, but you named one feeling or, or kind of two, you said it feels scary and it feels hard. So how does scared, how does scared Shara act, react or inactive? How do you, or when you feel like something's going to be hard, What's your response action wise? Honestly, it kind of holds me back, you know, just like I think it would uh, most people is when you're scared or it's hard, it's going to hold you back. And the, the thought of failing is also um, one of my big, big emotions I got to get over. Yeah. 
or doing it wrong. Okay. And how would one do it wrong? I'm curious, like. So leading calls, it's always scared me to lead a call, which I know I've done one, but I was always, I'm always scared to do one because I'm afraid I might lead it incorrectly or do something wrong or say something wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm a perfectionist too. And I can't, I, I want to do everything right. Mm-hmm. Well, you could say I have struggled with perfectionism. Yes. But we're not going to agree with that as your identity, right? So you don't right. say I'm a perfectionist because we're not going to agree with that as your permanent identity, but you have struggled with that. Yes. Um, okay. So, for, so with calls, for example, is something that you feel the pressure that you could do wrong. You weren't saying that as something like I could do it wrong when it comes to like building to senior gold. I wasn't sure what you meant by I could do it wrong. Yeah. You could, you could fail, right? Like you could try your hardest and come up short. You could, um, but let's talk about what else could be true. Um, let's talk about maybe other things that you like other things that you have done scared that were really hard. Um, maybe something, maybe cheerleading coaching or maybe something else in your life. Um, what are like, what actions have you pulled out from just like the depth of your character in times where it was hard and scary and you needed to overcome and how did you act? How did you respond? Um, so this year, um, I actually took my cheer team to competition, which I've never done. We've never done that. Um, my school actually has done that in um, eight to 10 years. So no, it's new to everybody. Mm-hmm. So we're all going into it blind and I'm the leader. So I have to try to make sure I coach them, even though I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> um and not knowing exactly what to do, I had to um, find those avenues to where I could get the information either from other coaches or find find ways for me to learn mm-hmm. so I can help pass that on. Um, even though I'm trying to reach out to somebody um, that I don't know, you know, trying to, you know, do that scary thing, but I had to do it and, you know, to move our team for, uh, further on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, like you've never done it. It's new. You're going in blind, which means you totally could fail because you've never done it before. Um, you might do it wrong. You're having to ask others how to do it. You're having to do scary things. Um, but it's totally within you. It's totally within you. And so you can remind yourself as your brain is saying, Oh, I don't know if I can, I could fail. I could do it wrong. Um, it was so much to hit 100 the first time. Like how in the world would I hit 250? That's the opportunity then to, to summon up these other truths that are also true um, and go, well, huh, you know, nobody had taken this team to competition in eight to 10 years and I'm doing it. Um, and I know we talked about this when you led the team call, but if you do it wrong, so what? Right. <laughs> If you do it wrong, that is an invitation to learn because people who never do anything wrong never learn. Right. So people who get who who are who take risks and do wrong things then are invited to learn from the mistakes and and fix it the next time. Right. So yeah, you might do it wrong. In fact, I would in fact I would celebrate if you do it wrong and you or then then you then have the opportunity to fix that mistake and not repeat it. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So you said when you feel like something is scary or hard, you hold back. I don't feel like I've ever seen you hold back. So can you elaborate on what it looks like when, so you've got like your best self. That's like, you know what? I've never done it, but I am dang it. I'm taking this team to competition. They deserve it. Like no one is going to stand in the gap for them, but me. And so it's going to happen. Okay. So you've got that, that Shara, which is like powerful, exceptional Shara at 250 points on June 30th. That's the Shara you want to channel because, you know, she's the one who's going to get you there. Um, so, but real quick, let's, let's, we need a sharp contrast. So like the holding back, what does that look like? So I'm glad, I'm glad you don't see it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's, That's awesome. Um, so like doing lives, I, I 
that scares me. Um, but I push myself to do it. So I, I feel like I need to do more okay. than what I'm, than what I'm doing for sure. Um, and a lot of times when I do a live, it's because it's taken me a couple of days to talk myself into doing that live. Yeah. That's the part you don't see. Yeah. Um, then I have, when we do, um, events like on Facebook, uh, all of us on, you know, under Cassie's team, uh, will be like, Hey, will anybody pop on and do a few minutes, you know, go live a few minutes in the groups. Yeah. I always stand back. I never volunteer to do that. Um, I finally did one. Good. So yes, just, um, last month I did one for Julia. Um, and I didn't die. You're right. And right. I did, and I did really good. Um, I went back and listened to it. I was like, Oh, that wasn't bad. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. um, so I finally did and I feel better. My thing is I've got to make myself do it one time. If I can do something one time, I'm like, Oh, okay. That's how that's, you know, it's fine. And then usually I'm, I'm good and I can take off and go, but I have to make myself do it that one time. Yeah. Okay. That helps me understand. So, cause we want to have a really sharp contrast between the, you know, the Shara that's holding back, that's resisting going live, that's resisting volunteering for that event or planning to host an event um, versus the one that's like, come hell or high water, these cheerleaders are going to competition and I'm the woman who's going to get them there. Right. You know, and so that, and so that motto of I'm the woman <laughs> who's going to get us here. Um, let's, let's come over to the actual math and maybe brainstorm ideas a little bit. You mapped out that if you add three people and you help each of those people to silver, um, that that's kind of your personal recruitment and development goal. And that is going to get you 12 new orders. And so along with retaining your strong, consistent gold team that you have had the past couple of months, which is in and of itself, it's a daily job. It's a daily job of keeping up with whose subscription is coming up checking in with them, seeing how their results are going and troubleshooting, um, suggesting other products, you know, like, oh my gosh, well, that sounds like you would really love hydrate. Have you ever heard of it? Have you tried it? So having conversations every day throughout the month to make sure that that retention piece is strong. And then you're, um, and then you've mapped out an additional 12 orders that you are going to be waking up and chasing after every day. Yes. And in order to get to senior gold, you're going to need to create 27 new orders. That's if every order is worth like five or six points, like 5.5 is what I divided because you have a worker on your team. So some of the ads won't be level ones. They'll be under Ashley or under others that you're developing. So that that's 27 new orders. And if you want a little bit of cushion, you might round it up to 30 and 30 is totally doable. If you're in high activity, like if you're creating event opportunities and sip and sees, and, you know, messenger events or online events or Zooms, totally doable. Because every person that comes, you can say, and you get a gift if you bring a friend or, you know, you get a gift for every friend you bring. And so if you're packing the house, doing all those little behind the scenes things, you could very easily get, you know, five, six, seven signups from each of those things. So I think it's just down to, um, it's down to creating the ideas for how you're going to create 27 to 30 new orders. Um, you've accounted for like 12 as far as who you're going to add and who you're going to develop. So what other ideas are kind of rolling around in your brain that you just need the nudge to act on? I have a few um, white lines that I also have on my list okay. that I'm going to see if they want to try something new um, or jump in to do some kind of, me and Ashley have kind of been talking to, and I have another girl that's on the fence about even just doing our own little private um, uh, energy, the ease challenge, because they, they're, they've they been on the fence for so long, they missed getting in on this last one. Oh, yeah. And I told them, I said, you know, look, if that's what you really want to do, I don't care to set one up privately Wow. And, you know, just to get them motivated and get them in there doing that. Um, yeah. 
so we are kind of doing that behind the scenes too. Um, we do messenger events um, or sending out samples and those that we send samples to will do messenger events for that week. We add them into an event um, just for them, for the ones that are getting samples so they can get some more information and not just be, oh, here's a sample. Okay. We, you said you do those weekly? Yeah, if it depends on samples, how many samples we send. Like if I don't send any samples out one week, then I'm not gonna do one. Um, mainly we just kind of target the ones that we send samples out. Um, unless I get a new person. If I sign a new, new person up, then I have started, um, as soon as I sign up, I start telling them, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I start putting them into the team page. Um, I have a team chat, that's just my team. Mm -hmm. um, I introduce them into that, uh, then, I start talking to them about, um, you know, um, if you bring three friends with you, I can help you get your products paid for. You know, I've already start putting that in the in in the works too. Mm -hmm. um, the issue I have uh, with most of mine is they just want to take their their happy product takers. Everybody on my team knows that they can earn income because <laughs> I went to them multiple times. Wow. Uh, but they're happy product takers, and I'm like, okay. Right. Um, and I do have several that will do shout out posts for me and they don't care to do that. And I have gotten some off of there and I always offer them, a ref, um, you know, just a, here's a referral from me, referral bonus from me because mm -hmm. they don't want them under them. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I think. Um, so here's what I, I have a couple additional ideas. Um, okay. uh, sorry, just a second. Okay, so number one, if you do run your private DPUP with ease um, for a smaller group, I would run through a couple of scenarios in your head. Like, okay, what could go well? Okay, what could go poorly? And what will we do about it if that thing happens? Because one thing I can see going a little more poorly is not as much engagement in the group right. or not as much buzz happening in the group. So no problem. It's just going ahead of time going, that could be an issue. So how are we going to overcome that and okay. think of that ahead of time? Um, I definitely hear you saying that you need to start building into your IPA some bold reach outs to leaders, very highly successful quality people that you know, because you've, you've said, I have a gold team, which is essentially 17 to 20 people, and they are all product takers. They know the income that's on the table. They do not want to earn money, <laughs> which <laughs> may change. We're going to keep touching back because that may yes. change, but we cannot wait around for a bunch of people that are going money. I don't need money. I love paying hundred dollars at the gas tank. Okay. So we're going to just bless those people to keep, uh, keep doing that. But it sounds like you got to incorporate some really bold reach outs in your IPA to leaders. People, right. I think of it as like, will I, will I have my feel? Like sometimes I reach out to someone and I'm like, my feelings really won't be hurt if they say no. Like I really just don't care what they think. So that's, that's the low hanging fruit. But who's the high hanging fruit? The people that you're like, if they ghost me, it will sting. If they say no, it will sting. Right. <laughs> and yeah, reaching I, out to- I do the um, winning day. With Cassie? Yeah, with Cassie. So that on the winning day, um, I have to reach out to one um, bold, I have to do a bold reach out to a big fish or whatever every day, at least five days a week. Good. Good. So, so that's, that's, in there. that's in there. Okay. And then the other thing I would add is I would, I would send a communication out the week um, before convention. I would include all your white, uh, white lines for anyone who's on the call and doesn't know what we mean by white line. That would be like someone on your team who has turned their subscription off. Like they're still in your back office. They're on your team, but haven't been actively ordering. We used to our reports reports would the line would be like blue if they had their subscription on and it would be white if it was off so that's the white line thing okay so i would include your white lines i would actually include your potentials and i would include maybe people you've never reached out to before this would be a communication going out to everybody and what you're trying to do is kind of prepare the the ground for um what's coming at convention i like to do this every year just to say I don't have any details, but I have heard rumors that the product that they're releasing at convention is going to be in hot demand. 
everybody I know who's trialing it is raving and saying that it's amazing. So I wanted to send you a heads up that something new is coming. I know you have not been on your product, like if it's a white line, I know you have not been on your products for a few months, but um, I will keep you in the know when I find out what this is, because whatever it is, you are probably going to want to get your hands on it and, and start back up again. So I send something like that out, just kind of preparing the land. And that way, when I'm at convention and I'm all excited, I can then reply or send it to that person. Um, and they're expecting it. They're expecting that communication. I think that would be good. And um, I think, yeah. So basically, I, as I'm doing the math, we have uh, 23 more days of this month and you're wanting 27 new orders, new orders that don't currently already exist as subscriptions. So you're basically shooting for one or two a day. So every day waking up and going, okay, what one or two people am I going to help get started? Even if that's helping someone on my team get someone started or myself, one or two a day. So that's, that's a balls to the wall month. But I know the woman who can do it because she's the same woman who takes the cheer team to the competition. So, okay. All right. Well, make sure, let's see, take a minute, Shara, to scroll, to scroll through the chat and just read some of the love that people are sending your way. Okay, Cassie says, I'm so proud of her. She's doing the hard things. She has fallen and taken her training wheels off and I've seen her soar. And I cannot echo that enough. Thank you. By the way, this as well, you being the coachy is also a win because I know that you've been asked a, a couple of times. So good for you. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I might, I might have been really nervous. And when you said I was going last, I was like, oh my gosh. And then Chelsea's talking and all these people start popping on. I'm like, Ooh. yes. <laughs> hey, I get it. I totally get it. And so it's just one more way that you're committed to growing and that you're willing to feel the uncomfortable feelings. They're going to come anyway, but you're inviting them in. So thank you so much. We're proud of you. Okay. Bye everybody.